Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, prepare to be amazed. Ah, don't you miss the circus? When was the last time you went? It's been a while since I went to one, but I do remember having fun. And getting overcharged for many things. I do have to admit, not everything in the circus was entertaining. Some shows were a bit boring, and some of the others were kind of scary. Especially those that featured crazy acts that I would never dare to do at home. However, when I look back in time, I realize that circuses in the past had very strange and perhaps even creepier acts. Today, we're gonna go down memory lane and look at 10 of the weirdest circus phenomena in history. I must warn you, it's very likely that you'll never get to see some of the people and acts featured on this video, or anything that even resembles them. A lot of these circus acts were clearly a form of exploitation and mockery, but I'm sure you'll agree that they are interesting and it's worth having a look at them. I don't think anything can prepare you for what's at the top of the list. It certainly changed the way I look at circuses, and I'm just glad this kind of act doesn't exist anymore. Number 10. The Bearded Lady. We start with someone you might be familiar with, especially if you watch the movie, trailer, poster, or anything even related to The Greatest Showman. Annie Jones was known all around the world as the Bearded Lady. People knew she was different at the young age of five, when she started to grow a mustache and some sideburns that made people call her the Bearded Girl. It is believed that Annie was bearing a condition known as hirsutism, which is when you develop a lot of hair in parts where there's supposed to be little or no hair at all. But it was this condition and Annie's amazing musical abilities that made her famous at the Barnum & Bailey Circus. In fact, Annie's uniqueness was evident since before she turned one. She actually joined the circus when she was only nine months old, and her parents received a $150 salary each week. Which, honestly, was a ton of money back then. I mean, who wouldn't love $150 each week just for having their baby at the circus? But honestly, that is a bit too much for a kid and wouldn't be so easily allowed these days. Number 9. Sword Swallowers Sword swallowing is not something that started in the circus. This practice began within the early civilizations in Rome and Greece in the 1st century AD, and was later brought to China in the 8th century. It was then part of street theater performances in the Middle Ages, and it finally became part of circuses and sideshows in the early 1900s. Now, sword swallowing acts were a bit different in Europe compared to the shows in America. In Europe, sword swallowers were focused on swallowing large numbers of swords, but in America, people were looking for the most bizarre things. So they tried all sorts of strange things such as swallowing longer swords, hot swords, and sometimes glowing neon tubes, which technically aren't swords, but the concept is still the same. This practice is not really a weird phenomenon, but instead it's an acquired skill. One that could cause injury or cause even death if performed poorly. Number 8. Isaac W. Sreg. When Isaac was a child, no one imagined he would end up joining a circus, but things started to change when he turned 12 and hit puberty. The guy began to lose a lot of weight, and he was not strong enough to perform his regular tasks. When he became an adult, he joined a circus and soon was known as the Human Skeleton. But his days at the circus didn't last long as the circus burned down. He then got married, had kids, and had to find a way back to the circus in order to make some money. After all, doing other work was almost impossible for him. But showing up as the skeleton man resulted in easy money with little physical effort. But poor Isaac also had a gambling problem, and his financial problems finally caught up to him and he passed away in Chicago in January of 1887. Up until his death, no one was able to figure out what caused Isaac to lose so much weight. However, his legacy did live on. Lots of sideshow attractions began to feature human skeletons. And in some sideshows, the living skeleton would marry the local fat lady in quirky and extravagant ceremonies. Number 7. El Nino Farini and Mademoiselle Lulu. Samuel Waskate was the adopted son of the famous acrobat and tightrope walker William Leonard Hunt. On stage, William was known as the Great Farini, and that is why his son Samuel was known as El Nino Farini. This kid was exceptional. One of the scariest things that he did was a stunt in which he played a drum while resting his neck against a trapeze bar without any support on his feet. He was kinda defying death, but you couldn't expect less from the son of a skilled acrobat like the great Farini. In fact, the duo also performed together in a stunt in which Sam balanced himself on his father's shoulders while this one walked across a tightrope that was hanging 180 feet above the ground. I can barely imagine that. 
I'm sure the people at Child Services would have some issues if they see something like that these days. Number 6. Violetta. Violetta was a woman with no arms and no legs. This was due to a condition called a Tetra Amelia Syndrome. However, these limitations didn't keep her from being active. In fact, she was more active than a lot of people I know. She combed her own hair, she sewed things together, and she was even able to thread a needle without any help. On top of that, her senses functioned at a higher level compared to the people around her. When she went on tour, she was called the beautiful armless and legless Venus. Doctor said she had a beautiful torso, and people loved seeing her on tour. At the end of the show, she would go around to greet the audience. But some men, and even some women, would try to get closer and kiss her, which Violetta didn't like. In response, she would jab their chin with her shoulder, which really caused a lot of pain that kept them from trying to do that in the future. Number 5. The Fireproof Woman Have you seen fire breathers? They look like those dragons we often see in medieval movies and cartoons. Some of them are professional, and some of them are not. But there's one woman who was known as the Fire Queen, and she easily topped any fire performance you've seen before. Her name was Josephine Ghirardelli, and she would put boiling lead in her mouth while holding a hot iron block with one of her bare hands, and then she would place it over her head. And if that wasn't enough, she would do this while walking barefoot on a hot plate made out of metal. And sometimes she would use a free hand to cook an egg in hot oil. Some people questioned her abilities, claiming that she wasn't legit. But she said this performance was possible thanks to her hard work and passion. At some point, she started ingesting poison to add more thrill to the show. I guess she was pretty passionate about trying dangerous things. Number 4. The Lion Drome. How do you turn a crazy show into something even crazier and weird? Well, just add a lion to it. The Wall of Death was a popular type of sideshow that consisted of a huge cylinder with the shape of a barrel in which motorcycles and miniature cars would drive along a vertical wall and perform all sorts of crazy stunts. The show is quite impressive, and the drivers definitely need some skill if they don't want to get hurt while doing it. But apparently some people wanted a more thrilling experience, so they added a lion to the show. Of course, having a lion ride on the same seat as the driver could be challenging as the whole thing could potentially stress the animal and trigger attacks. For that reason, they added a small sidecar for the lions and drivers had to stay away from alcohol, because lions hate the smell of it. Also, you know, dangerous death-defying stunt, but oh no, the lions hate it. A lot of circuses adopted the idea, which makes sense since they already knew how to tame lions and perform crazy stunts with miniature cars. Number 3. James Morris. Here's another person with a very peculiar condition. His name was James Morris, and he had something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which allowed him to stretch his skin to jaw-dropping lengths. People called him the India Rubber Man, and some others called him the Elastic Skin Wonder. His show was very popular, because it looks like a lot of things that he did were a bit hard to watch, but I'm sure no one wanted to take their eyes off of him, especially when he did things like taking the skin around his neck and pulling it up to his eyes. His skin was pretty elastic, and he enjoyed entertaining other people. That's why he ended up joining the Barnum Circus and earned $300 a week, which is equivalent to thousands of dollars in our time. But sadly, James was struggling with a lot of stuff, and had to get a second job as a barber in order to pay his bills. Also, his ability started to cause him pain, as scars and welts began to form around the areas that he stretched. Now it's time for the day's best pick. This person had something called microcephaly, which is a disorder that causes people to have a small brain and a small skull. Lots of people with microcephaly joined different circuses, sideshows, and carnivals, and they were called pinheads or missing links. But the guy I'm showing you right now has a rather interesting story, and no one really knows where he came from. Let's talk about that now with number two. Schlitzy. Not only was he a sideshow performer, but Schlitzy was also an actor. He started off as part of a sideshow in which he received different titles, such as The Lass of the Aztecs and The Monkey Girl. Sometimes he was introduced alongside other microcephalic performers, and sometimes he was presented as an androgynous character to add some mystery to his personality. Also, he wasn't able to hold his bladder for too long. That's why wearing diapers and dresses made everything more practical for him. His show was so successful that he landed roles in films like Freaks and other ones called Tomorrow's Children. In Freaks, he worked alongside a pair of conjoined twins, a pair of dwarf siblings, and a performer known as the Snake Man. 
Schlitzie's gravesite indicates that he was born in the Bronx, New York, but other sources say that he was born in New Mexico. However, when he was introduced at the sideshow, people would say that he was from Yucatan, Mexico, which played well with the idea that he was the last of the Aztecs. The truth is, no one will ever know where he's actually from. He has this information to so many carnivals that it probably got lost at some point. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. The Pig Face Lady. In an effort to be entertaining, an English rumor began to spread, claiming that the daughter of a noble family had been born with the face of a pig. This happened in the 17th century, between the years of 1814 and 1815. Even the newspapers were filled with stories from people declaring that they had seen the girl. The circuses wasted no time and made a show out of it, saying they had their own pig-faced lady. Unfortunately, or fortunately for the royal family, none of this was true. The circuses did not have a pig-faced lady, but one of them had something very odd and disturbing. They had a drunken bear dress in woman's clothes. That was their pig-faced lady. If anything, that was animal exploitation, but people bought into it for a while and that's just pretty sad. Circuses were not just entertaining, it seems like they also had very dark and creepy shows in the past. I'm kinda glad things are different now though. Have you ever been to the circus? What was the craziest thing you saw? Let us know in the comments section down below. With all that said and done, I'll see you all next time. Later everybody.